So friend, let's take our question number 28. Now this question belongs to section of electromagnetism. Here a uniformly charged ring of radius r, the electric field on its axis has the largest magnitude at a distance h from its center and we have to find the value of h. Now, let's see how to solve this question. So this is height. Let's take its x right now and this is r and the charge is distributed on this ring and let's suppose this charge is q, right? At this certain point p, what should be the formula for electric field at point p? It should be 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q x divided by x square plus r square power 3 by 2, right? Now, if at point P, the electric field is maximum, then in that case, the differential of electric field at that point should be zero. So I'll just differentiate this equation. On differentiating dE by dx, d by dx, one upon four pi epsilon naught qx divided by x square plus r square power 3 by 2. What will happen is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught it will come out q so d by dx of x divided by x square plus r square 3 by 2 right. So on doing this this differential should be 0 because e have to maximum. When you solve each and every value of this, you will find that x would be equal to r by root 2. So in this case, x is equals to h for us. Let's see which is the best suiting option, option 1. So answer to this question would be option 1. Hope you have understood this question. Let's move ahead and solve our next question. Now in this question, there are two coherent sources who produces wave of different intensities which interfere. This belongs to optics. And after interference, the ratio of the maximum intensity to minimum intensity is 16. The intensity of the waves are in the ratio. So maximum to minimum ratio has been given to you. So let's see the solution. So maximum intensity to minimum intensity is given as root of I1 plus root of I2 divided by root of i1 minus root of i2 whole square right or you can also go with i max by i minimum is equals to a1 plus a2 divided by a1 minus a2 whole square as the square of the amplitude will be proportional to intensity. Now solving here i max is 16 times of this so 16 by 1 is equals to a1 plus a2 divided by a1 minus a2 right. So from here this is the square the square will come over so 4 will be equal to a1 plus a2 divided by a1 minus a2. From this you will get 4a1, 4a2 that is equals to a1 plus a2. On solving this, you will get thrice of a1 would be equal to 5 times of a2. So a1 by a2 would be equals to 5 by 3. Therefore, i1 by i2 would be equal to 25 by 9, right? Because i intensity is proportional to square of the amplitude. So let's see which is the best suited option. So among the following, option 1 is the answer to this question. Hope you have understood this one. Let's move to the last question of this paper. Now this question belongs to mechanics. Here there are two masses that is m and m by 2. They are connected to two ends of a massless rigid rod of length L. The rod is suspended by a thin wire of torsional constant K at the center of mass of this two body system and because of the torsional constant of k the restoring torque acting on the object is k theta if the rod is rotated by theta naught and released then the tension when it 
passes through its mean position will be. So as you can see in this diagram here, there are two masses attached to this massless rod L with a string with the roof at center of mass, right? Now the masses being different, definitely this would be x1 and this would be x2. First of all, it is very important to understand that why tension will come in this rod. When you will disturb this equilibrium position, you will distort it, you will give some potential energy to the system. And that potential energy when released, it will convert into kinetic energy of these bodies. And that's why they will perform a circular motion like that. And that circular motion, they will have some velocity or angular velocity and that angular velocity will definitely will create a force m x2 omega square outwards due to that tension will arise inside, right? So this is the tension we wanted to find. So very first important is what is x2 and what is the value of omega? So let's start with the solution. First of all, the center of mass position can be m by 2 into 0 plus m into L by m by 2 plus m. Solving this, x center of mass would be equal to 2 L by 3. So, from here, the distance till center of mass would be 2 L by 3. That is, x1 is 2 L by 3. That makes x2 as L by 3 only, right? Now, we have the values of x1 and x2. Let's put it x1 would be 2L by 3 and x2 would be L by 3. With this, what would be the moment of inertia of this system? So, moment of inertia would be simply summation of the moment of inertia of all the discrete masses about the point of axis of rotation. So, it is m by 2, 2 L by 3 whole square plus m L by 3 whole square. Solving this, you will get ML square by 3, right? So, I have the moment of inertia of the system. Now, let's talk about the potential energy created due to the rotation, which is provided by the external agent. So, that potential energy will be equal to half K into what is the angular displacement given? K theta naught square. This will convert into kinetic energy of the system. That is a rotational kinetic energy of the system. So, what is the rotational kinetic energy of system represented as? It is half i omega square. With this, I will get half and half cancelled. So, k theta naught square would be equal to m l square by 3 omega square. From this omega square is equals to 3 k theta naught square upon m l square. So, I have the omega square with me. As per our discussion, what is the tension acting is m x2 omega square. We have x2, we have omega. Let's put down the values here. So from here, I'll say T is equals to m x2 omega square. So it is m into L by 3 into 3 k theta naught square by m L square. You can see here that the mass and length can be cancelled down. This 3 and this 3 will be cancelled down. So, what would be the tensions value? Tension would be k theta naught square upon what is remnant is L. This is the tension we can find. Let's see which is the best suited option. So, as per the question says, option number 2 is the best suited answer for this question. Hope this was clear to you. So, this was the end of the morning sessions paper. I hope this was useful. And I wish you good luck for your results. Now let's meet in the next video solution of paper of evening session of 9 January. Till then, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.